Okay, I was hoping to work in the shop today, but I got to get some tax stuff finished up, and that's going to chew up the rest of my afternoon, so yay. I've been putting that off long enough. But um, I wanted to get a video up this afternoon, or try to anyhow, and this stuff has been sitting on my desk, and I'd like to get it put away. So I figured I'd get this video done. Um, I had this stuff given to me by my buddy Nick a few weeks ago when he was looking for the uh, manual, or yeah, when he's looking for the manual for my uh, hay conditioner. Um, didn't find the manual, but he found a bunch of this stuff in his grandpa's filing cabinet, so he gave it to me. Um, several brochures here, the first one, and sorry we're on the floor, there's just more room on the floor. Um, the first one doesn't cover any specific tractor. It covers every model of front wheel assist. Um, is there a print date on this one? I'm guessing 60, 63. I was going to say it'd have to be because that's a C-Series 1900. Throttles on the side, tilt column, and spears on the hood. Sixteen hundred, eighteen hundred, nineteen hundred. Talking about the benefits of four wheel drive. Oliver was the first one, followed pretty close on the heels by Minneapolis Moline to offer factory installed front wheel assist where the tractor was actually designed from the drawing board to have a front wheel assist axle on it from right off the assembly line. Everybody else at that point was aftermarket, or before that point was aftermarket add-on. And there were a few um, limited production factory front wheel assists, but most of them were aimed toward the construction industry and were not built in any sort of quantity whatsoever. And then this one is for a 540 planner, which works out because I didn't did not previously have a, have a uh, brochure for my 540, so now I do. This is an early one. Uh, also 63. So this one shows it with the steel seed cans on it. Mine are fiberglass, so mine's later. Probably 67, 68 time frame. But this was always my favorite part. It ever my advertised you could plant, and I'm seeing eight mile an hour. Um, they must have decided that that was a little too much because I think the later ones go you uh, like six and a half or seven mile an hour. But eight mile an hour with a plate planter, that's cooking. But you got insecticide attachments and this was the one part I always liked was you had the individual trip on the marker arms. It wasn't very often that you needed it, but there were times. There's different types of seed attachments. This was also nice too, the one bolt and you could dump the hoppers forward for clean out, that was nice. different fertilizer attachments, double disc opener, single disc, runner, and then I guess I don't know, they call it a southeastern shovel opener, that seems pretty darn aggressive, so I don't know what situation would lead to you needing something like that, maybe somebody from the southeast will know. These are your different 
attachments for the seed opener, a double disc, covering knives, disc furrower. Um, mine has these. Bed levelers, gauge shoes, and then your eight row squadron hitch, which you could, these was, this was more than just planning. You would, well, that squadron hitch is that squadron hitch right there pulling that tandem disc set up. Had a buddy, actually the guy who I bought my 2255 from, had one of these and I missed it by a year. He scrapped it. They, he had actually had this set up. He pulled two 540s with the squad, Oliver squadron hitch like that. And then he had, uh, double folding marker arms which obviously when you're doing that only you only have a marker arm on one end of each planter and then the little 312 on the, on the 550 we'll do that one last I think I have or I think I already had one of these for the 2255 this is just a one page brochure Eighteen hundred brochure. I'm guessing that this one's probably a sixty-three. Nope, sixty-four. So he must have got this right before he bought he bought the eighteen hundred that we have now, or he got this with the tractor, one of the two. Because technically he bought that tractor new in, I think, January of 65. Because they were doing a deal on a tractor and a plow to get rid of old stock to make way for the 50 series. Talking about the hydropower. Wet PTO clutch. Creeper drive. I could never figure out where they always found these fields to pull these big ass plows on these tractors. Around here, he pulled the five bottom with it and there were spots where they took the fifth bottom off and knocked it down to four. But around here, you'd never pull that six, no way. Talking about your engine choices, gas, LP, and diesel. Some of the options, power, ju power adjuster wheels, belt pulley. These things are pretty pricey if you find them now. They don't come around that often. Dual speed power takeoff, which in this case is not a thousand and five forty, it's a thousand in engine speed. Um, they had a thousand RPM set or set up for this, but it uh, it was its own separate unit. You couldn't change gear, so you either five forty or a thousand. Wide swinging drawbar, and your different configurations. <clears throat> Row crop, Wheatland, rice, four-wheel drive. Another one-pager for the 565 plow, which is what he had with the 1800. This one's a 63 print. Three sixty four Cullivator. 
That picture got used a lot. That's a 1600 utility, if I remember right. And a 63 print. These were a fairly popular cultivator. Different ground engaging attachments you could get. Four row, two row, six row. And then the 372 was kind of specifically designed for the 550. It was just a channel iron frame with uh, square stock units. Sixteen fifty. Here's where the 50 series is where they came out with the actual true dual speed where you could shift them. Although you could still get a single speed, which most of the 1650s probably would have been a single speed 540 because probably not too many thousand RPM implements small enough to run with 66 horse. 18 combine. I already I, I had one of these. Or, I have one, obviously I have an 18 combine, but I'm pretty sure I have, although I think my brochure is different. I think it still shows a 550 pulling it, but I think it's from a different angle. So this must be a different year. This is a 61 print. I really need to get this thing going one of these days. It'd be cool to cut wheat with. I've never actually seen one with a Wisconsin on it. Every one I've ever seen has been PTO, so that was probably a fairly rare option. And mine's got the finger reel. I wish it had the retractable finger auger. And I have seen one edible bean model, and ironically, it wasn't an Oliver, it was a cockshut. That was at an auction I went to when I was a little kid. The guy had a bunch of combines. Most of them got scrapped, unfortunately. Don't mind Teeter, she's playing with her toy. Then you got the Model 25, which was the baby self-propelled. The Model 40, which was the big guy. The two row corn head for the 40, which I heard those things were atrocious. And then the model 40 rice combine. There was actually one of these sold around here and it went to scrap. They bought it. Well, we won't go into that story, but dad remembers it as a kid. It was around. But they were a full track machine, no steer or no steering wheels. And then this is kind of neat. It was put out by Gulf Oil. Actually, we'll do that last. We'll do this full line brochure. One of these days, I want to see if I can find this farm. Looks like Carl Crowfoot. 
if this is the farm that I think it is, it wasn't too far outside of Charles City. And Oliver used it for a lot of, Oliver and White both used it for a lot of photo shoots. But this is obviously 78 full line catalog. Eighty nine hundred, one thirty five. Obviously, tractors come first, starting with the big boy, the two one eighty. And then the one fifty five. But all these pictures here should be on that farm. Should be. Was there? Oh, okay, yeah. 155 here, 135 here. And then the, this is the series where they went to the inboard planetaries. That's what the operator station is supposed to look like. Obviously the 2105. Probably one of the best tractors they ever built. Although there really wasn't a loser in this whole series. The whole 105 or 185 up to the one up to the sorry the 285 up to the 2180 were all pretty well I actually the 270 because all that is is a 1655 with different sheet metal really this whole series was pretty bulletproof if only they could have got the 55 series Oliver's that bulletproof then we get into the big big horses four wheel drives 2180 and the 2150 wish mine looked that shiny one of these days, it's going to take a lot of money to get it there. I do need to find that style of stack for it, though. Or buy that style of stack for it. And then we get into the Asikis. Or no, these might still be... These might still be Fiat. I think these might still be Fiat. The utilities start to get goofy. 260, 250. Combines, 8,900. 8,800. 8,600. Seventy three hundred. Corn heads. Bean heads. They were real proud of that quick cut bar, man. Tell you what, after running it, eh. And I'm talking about the new style. Or is this still the old style? This might still be. This is still the old style quick, swi quick switch. Then the 5542, which was specifically a small grain combine. More often than not, when you find them, they got pickup heads on them. And then the 8650. There are a fair number of these. You see them pop up every once in a while. Pull type. Usually you find them up in Canada. 
we get into planters. Fifty one hundred air planter. Or sorry, fifty four hundred air planter. Fifty one hundred came second. I have never seen one with this heavy marker arm on it. All the ones I've seen have the pipe style one piece marker arms that don't fold. Don't know why I don't see, you don't see that many of those because that's a lot better marker. Of course, maybe you had to get up to the eight row to get it. Thirty four hundred toolbar planner. Five forty three plate planner. This would have been technically it came out on the Owler five forty three, but this one would have been the first one to offer a no till capability. Three forty three toolbar plate planner. Five oh eight semi mounted plow. Five eighty eight. Five forty nine with an on land hitch. Five ninety eight very width. Three forty eight three point thirty two forty two three point, which this has to be probably one of Oliver's longest running production plows because they this came out in the early sixties and it basically went until the very end. They built that plow forever. Actually, it might have been, it came out, no, it came out in the early 50s, or mid-50s, because it would have came out for the, fi for the 550. So, yeah, it came out like 50, 57-ish, 57, 58, somewhere in there. So, yeah, they built that for a while. 449 pull type, that was the big boy. 6 to 10 bottom. 63-42 rollover. 43-42 then the big, big boy, the 25-49 and 25-88 flex back, which was basically a pull-type plow or pull-type trailer plow with a three-point added in the middle of it and then a semi-mounted plow. And you could actually unhook the rear section of the plow and use it like a regular semi-mounted and use the front half like a regular pull type. But basically, if you needed a bigger plow, it let it bend in the middle to cover or to follow ground contour better. Don't see that many of them. I've only ever seen one come up for sale. 378 cultivator. Field cultivators. Chisel plows. 281 offset, 271 and 272, 264, 250 series, they built them things forever too, loaders, 1610, 1554 and 1510 which was built for the utilities and then the 1710 was built for the big tractors at one point there was an 1810 but i don't think they built those very long then when we get to the lawn and garden stuff talking about parts But 
that right there should be that farm there. It'd be cool to it'd be cool to know if that farm was still around and see if I could get it. Or see if I could go see it. But that came this this one came from our dealer in town. And last but not least, we'll do this guy. Let me get it out of the sleeve here. Well, this was put out by Gulf Oil. And basically all it is, and I could not find a issue date on it, but all basically what it covers is the care and maintenance of farm tractors. Um, not very specific to any model. Or not specific to any model or make or brand, it's just... But covers uh, like accident prevention, transmission fluid, belt pulleys, carburetors, oils, diesel engines, diesel injectors, final drives, gas engines, heavy duty motor oils, lubrication, maintenance, oil filters, research, radiators. I mean, you name it, it's covered in here in one shape or form. And they got cross sections and stuff from a lot of different companies. Like here's a four cylinder Moline engine. JI case. Limiting requirements for diesel fuel oils, number one, number two, and number four. You could probably dang near do a whole video on just this book. I'm going to try to get through it quick. Classification of crankcase oils. Engine maintenance. Courtesy of Deer. Alice Chalmers. Oliver. Diesel injectors, valves, burn valve resulting from heavy duty operation with too great of guide stem clearance. This valve was burned because it was held off the seat by insufficient tappet clearance. Temperature affects battery storage. Ignition system, plugs, plug wear, cooling system. They tried really hard to make that not look like an Oliver. Nancy Ferguson, dual range, case matic torque converter, I'm guessing that's the Ford, yeah, that's the Ford Selecto Slam, Talking about steering gears, crawler maintenance, courtesy of Caterpillar, go figure. 
That's the Oliver, Oliver Live spindle right there that they use down the Wheatlands and the, the heavy duty arch axles. Hydraulic systems. Safety. Safety rules. Troubleshooting chart for gasoline engines. Troubleshooting chart for diesels. Proper storage. Cold weather operation, fuel storage. Product selection featuring Gulf Oil, go figure. I wish they still did stuff in steel can and stuff like this. It was even just the storage stuff we use for storage cans jars stuff just had more art form to it did not know golf made tires or batteries yes and that's the golf research facility So, and then there's the sleeve for it. So, anyhow, I wanted to, teeter's had enough of it. I wanted to get that stuff videoed so I can get it put away in my new filing system. So, I guess I'm going to go over to mom and dad to get some paperwork around that I still have stuffed around over there and go do some more tax stuff so i guess that's it for this one we'll catch you guys on the next one